One month before the 2020 election, we were led to believe that a group of 51 so-called intelligence experts spontaneously drafted a letter that saved the Biden family from being exposed. But that wasn't true. The Biden administration themselves orchestrated and colluded to make that letter happen. And some of the people who signed that letter are here on the screen. You remember them. Jim Clapper, Mike Hayden, Leon Panetta, John Brennan, many others all signed this letter. And we've read this letter many times here. But let's take a quick look at it again. You see, this was drafted October 19th, 2020. Bunch of paragraphs from all of these intelligence people, many of them signing on to this. The person we're going to be talking about today is this guy right here, Michael Morell, former acting director, CIA, former deputy director, CIA, former director of analysis, CIA, and many others, 51 in total. They all said, look, we're all CIA, we're all FBI, George Bush, blah, 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 blah. And all of this was crafted to say that the Hunter Biden laptop story is evidence of Russia involvement. Russia interference has all the markings of Russian involvement. Very suspicious factors make us deeply suspicious about this. And so the Biden administration latched onto this. And we also know that the media latched onto this. Politico wrote this article and they all freaked out. They used this as a pretext to dump the Hunter Biden laptop story and to say that it was irrelevant. Well, now we know that those 51 intelligence experts, so-called, they didn't just come together, wake up one Saturday morning and say, you know, let's save America. No, they were coerced, colluded with. They were incentivized by the Biden administration. The House GOP reported this. They say new testimony reveals that Secretary Blinken, Anthony Blinken, the current secretary of state and the Biden campaign were behind the infamous public statement from former Intel officials on the Hunter Biden laptop. They were involved in it. The Biden people wanted them to do this. This wasn't just 51 people who decided to do this on their own. Jim Jordan sent a letter on April 20th to Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State. Before we read the letter, let's see what Jordan said about this. What we do know, uh, Laura, is what you said. This has been political from the get-go. Clear back to the Morrell situation when the story came out on October 14th, 2020, about the Biden business operation and was then Vice President Joe Biden involved. There was some concern that, that, that he was and then quickly it turns in this political operation, that, that letter that became the basis for suppressing the story and keeping it from the American people just days before the most important election we have, election for president of the United States. So understand what happened, Laura. The 14th, the Post does a story. The 17th, Tony Blinken, senior advisor to the Biden campaign, current secretary of state, contacts Mike Morrell, gets him interested in this. Mike Morrell looks at it the next day, organizes on the 18th. All these other people to sign the letter. The 19th, the letter goes out. And then on the 22nd, the reason Mike Morrell said he did the letter was he thought tr President Trump would bring the issue up during that debate on the 22nd of, of October. And of course he did. And they wanted some statement that Joe Biden could use. Because as Mr. Morrell said, they wanted him to win. Yeah, and well, what yeah. happens on the 22nd? Yeah. Joe Biden brings it up. And, it, and then after that debate, here's the kicker. Steve Reschetti, chair of the Biden campaign, calls up Mike Morrell and thanks him for doing it all. It was a total political operation. And the Amazing. most important fact is, Laura, it was false. It oh. wasn't Russian disinformation. Yeah. The laptop story looks to be true. It was true. We've seen it. The whole thing was a giant scam. We knew back then that it looked real. We had Tony Bobulinski. Others were corroborating it. We were looking at emails. We could see it all felt legitimate. Here's more, Jim. It, it, was, it was choreographed all the way. And understand this, too. It wasn't just their names on that letter, on that statement. It was their names and their title. Former head Agencies. of ODNI, mm. former CIA director. That gave it, that gave it this, this, this feeling and this impression that it was, yeah, this imprimatur that it was accurate when it wasn't. And that's the scariest thing of mm. all. And that, that letter became the basis for keeping this information from the American people. And the other thing that was important we learned in that deposition with Mr. Morrell is they were even, Mr. Morrell was even trying to direct who, the Biden campaign told him who to get this to in the media. It was that coordinated. All of them got the memo, use this to combat the liar Russian operative, Donald Trump and his MAGA insurrectionists, give them the memo so that they can use that in the media to put down the story and the media did that. Twitter did it. They, they suppressed the New York Post story. 
Nobody was allowed to talk about the Hunter Biden stuff. It was all hack materials. It was all Russian misinformation and disinformation. And that was 51 people on the so-called CIA, right? These are supposed to be intelligence people. Jim Jordan sent the letter over to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. He says, Dear Secretary Blinken, the Committee on the Judiciary and the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence are conducting federal oversight of law enforcement and intelligence matters within our jurisdictions. And we are now examining the origins of the infamous public statement signed by 51 former intelligence officials that falsely discredited a New York Post story regarding the Hunter Biden laptop as Russian disinfo. And as part of our oversight, we have learned that you, Anthony Blinken, the United States Secretary of State, played a role in the inception of this statement while serving as a Biden campaign advisor. We therefore request your assistance with our oversight. Why is a Biden campaign official and now current Secretary of State, why were they colluding with a bunch of ex-intelligence officials to create a statement that was later proven false? On October 14th, the New York Post published a report detailing how Hunter Biden used the position and influence of his father, now President Joe Biden, for personal gain with the apparent awareness of President Biden. New York Post story, October 14, 2022. The article reported on several emails found on the laptop belonging to Hunter that he had abandoned in a repair shop. The contents cast doubt on President Biden's previous denials about speaking with his son and his international business dealings. Within five days of the article, on October 19th, 51 so-called intelligence officials released a public statement reporting about Hunter Biden, stating that the story, here it is, has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. James Clapper, public statement, October 19, 2020. News publications immediately ran with the statement. Politico published a story with a conclusive headline. They came to the conclusion, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former officials say, footnote four. So that all then got spread all over the place and the media copy and pasted it and used it to squash the whole story. Social media companies simultaneously restricted access to the post story so that America couldn't see the truth, including Twitter locking the post and then the White House press secretary Kayleigh McEnany accounts for sharing a link to the article. Kayleigh McEnany, Trump's press secretary, she got nuked for it too, which is suppressing an official government official. Then White House press secretary couldn't even share the article. During the final presidential debate on October 22nd, after this fake article, this fake letter was written. Then Vice President Biden cited the public statement to rebut Trump's criticism. He said, look, there are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this is, what he's accusing me is, is a Russian plan. Still with the Russians. They have said this all along has the characteristics for five former head of the CIA, five former heads of the CIA. So what kind of intelligence do they have? Very limited. They couldn't even tell something was real. It looked real. We had Tony, we had actual witnesses. We had emails. There were people corroborating the emails with Trump travel dates and news articles. An email said, we're going to be in the Middle East at this time. Weird. You look at the news, he was in the Middle East at the time. Strange, right? It all matched up. But the CIA couldn't figure it out. Or maybe there's just a bunch of liars over there who wanted to make sure a political op was successful. So they traded on the name of the U.S. government for their political ends. And they were dishonest to the rest of the country in the process. Or they're just idiots and they didn't know any better. They're like, well, this seems like Russian disinformation, and so therefore, you know, it is. I'm not so sure, I don't think they're dumb. After all, this whole process was successful. It worked, Donald Trump lost the election. Both parties say, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except him and his good friend, Rudy Giuliani. So subsequent reporting revealed that the New York Post story was not, as the public statement claimed, part of a Russian disinformation operation. No, in fact, the revelation came nearly two years after the fact, but it was of little consolation. The concerted efforts to dismiss the serious allegation of the Post reporting and to suppress the story played a substantial role in 2020. The Committee of Congress recently conducted a transcribed interview with Michael Morell, the person who signed the letter near the bottom right here. Michael Morell former acting director of the CIA. He said the following. He was the deputy director of the CIA, one of the signatories. In his interview, Morell testified that on or around October 17th, you, you, Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State, you reached out to him to discuss the Hunter Biden laptop story. So Anthony Blinken picks up the phone, calls over to Morell. Hey, you're former CIA, right? Yeah. 
At the time, you served as a senior advisor to the Biden campaign. According to Morell, although your outreach was couched as simply gathering Morell's reaction to the story, he, you know, it's just Anthony Blinken here. I just want to see what you think about this. You know, you're former CIA. What do you think? It set in motion the events that led to the issuance of a public statement. This is what Morrell testified to during a transcribed interview. He said, question, but prior to Anthony's call, Blinken, you, you did not have any intent to write this statement prior to his call? I did not. Okay. So his call triggered this. It did. Yes. It triggered that intent in you. Yes, absolutely. The same day, October 17th, you, Anthony Blinken emailed Morrell. You sent an article from a USA Today alleging that the FBI was examining whether the laptop and the Hunter Biden investigation was part of a disinformation campaign. So we have questions about who pushed that story to USA Today, right? The very bottom of the email that you forwarded to Morrell, you included the signature block of Andrew Bates, then director of rapid response for Biden. Morrell, during this interview, this depot, testified that his communication with you was one of a few communications that he had with the Biden campaign. He explained that he also received a call from Steve Ricchetti, chairman of the Biden campaign, following the October 22nd debate to thank him for writing the statement. He testified. Mr. Morrell said, after the debate, I, I think it was after the debate. He said, in fact, I'm pretty sure it was after the debate. I got a phone call from Jeremy Bash, who I work with over at Beacon and who's politically active. And Jeremy said, hey, man, do you have a minute to talk to Steve Ricchetti? I said, yeah, of course I do. The campaign advisor for the campaign chairman for President Biden. Yeah. He said he was the head of the Biden campaign at the time. And Jeremy got him on the line. And Steve, thanked me for putting the statement out. And that's it. That's pretty much the extent of it. He just called and said, hey, thanks. We really needed that for the debate. Morell also explained, Anthony, that the Biden campaign helped to strategize about the public release of the statement. Morell testified that he sent an email telling Nick Shapiro, former deputy chief of staff and senior advisor to director of the CIA, John Brennan, that the Biden campaign wanted the statement to go to a particular reporter at the Washington Post first, and that he should send the statement to the campaign when he sent the letter to the reporter colluding with former CIA officials and the media to shift stories around. Morell testified that he did not recall why he told the Shapiro the campaign wanted the statement to go to this reporter first and admitted that he may have spoken to the campaign on another occasion. Morell further explained that one of his two goals in releasing the statement was to help the then vice president in the debate and to assist him in winning the election. Look at that. So he knew exactly what he was doing. And he's got all these friends in the intelligence communities all gathering up this data. Will you sign this? Will you sign this? Will you sign this? Hey, come over here. We're working on something. You hate Trump, right? You know anybody else who hates Trump? Who else do you know? Yeah, I know everybody. Okay, you get him, get him, get him, get him. Planning the whole thing. He testified. What was the intent of the statements? Well, there were two intents. One intent was to share our concern with the American people that the Russians were playing on this issue. And two, it was to help Vice President Biden. Chairman Jordan asks him, you wanted to help the vice president. Why? Because I wanted him to win the election. You wanted him to win? That's why? Yes, sir. Holy moly, this guy's honest. Based on Morell's testimony, it is apparent the Biden campaign played an active role in the origins of the statement, which had the effect of helping to suppress the story about Hunter Biden and prevented America from making fully informed decisions about the election. Although the statement signatories have an unquestioned right to free speech and free association, of course they do. They don't even dispute that. Their reference to their national security credentials lent weight to the story and suggested access to specialized information unavailable to other Americans. The concerted effort to minimize and suppress the public dissemination of the serious allegations about the Biden family was a grave disservice to all Americans and the participation in our democracy. They don't care at all about that. Based on the information we've obtained to date, Anthony, we believe that you possess material that would advance our ability to inform potential legislative reforms. Here's what we would like to see from you. One, please identify all the people with whom you communicated about the inception, drafting, editing, signing, publishing, promotion of the Hunter Biden letter. Please produce, two, all the documents and communications about the public statement sent to receive between these dates. We'd like these no later than May 4th, 2023. And because these events occurred prior to your nomination and confirmation as Secretary of State, we seek your cooperation with our request in your personal, not your official capacity. And although our requests do not implicate department equities, and accordingly there should be no basis for with your department to interfere with our oversight, we have addressed these to you in your official capacity as the secretary, 
just as a courtesy. You were personal and private when you did this, but you're in office now, so we'll be nice. If you are presented and represented by private counsel in this matter, please have them contact our office. Very sincerely, your friend, Jim Jordan and Mike Turner. Jordan is on the Judiciary Committee, Mike Turner on the Permanent Select Intelligence Committee. All of that being delivered to the United States Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State saying that you were involved in colluding with the media, colluding with former intelligence officials, trading on the name of the intelligence communities to promote a hoax so that Joe Biden had something to talk about at a debate. Meanwhile, enabling the media to silence the truth about the Biden crime family. Absolutely disgusting.